Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hall Family Wines Happy Hour. I am so excited that you joined today because our program is really extraordinary and very special. We love all our programs, but this is one that has everybody at the uh, winery so excited about, and especially me. As you could tell by the picture that we just put on the um, on screen, our guests today are members of the cast of Schitt's Creek, which for those of you who watched the Emmys, absolutely swept the Emmys uh, Sunday night. And we are so excited to have them here anyway, and uh, especially excited about the timing. So two of the cast members, Dan and Eugene Levy, couldn't join us at the last minute, but they will be back later this year, and we're looking forward to that. And we are joined by Annie Murphy, Catherine O'Hara, and No Reed. So it's a fabulous show that we have going forward, and so glad that you're here. Really looking forward to sharing great wine with them and um, some laughs, and hopefully we'll learn a little bit about them. We know their characters so very well. Now, the wines that we are going to be tasting are three. We have a Pinot Noir uh, and two Cabernets. I think we're going to put that up on the screen for you. Right. So the order will start uh, on your right. We're going to start with the, uh, I think it's on your right. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start with the Pinot Noir, the Bob's Ranch Pinot Noir. That's a 2018. Then we're going to go to the uh, 1873 uh, Cabernet from Hall, and we'll end up with the 2017 Catherine Hall. So those are the three wines. This would be the time to pop at least one of them if you want to join and taste with me and with the members of the cast. Um, we are also having a special right now on those wines so that if you ship, uh, you order three or more, we can ship them to you for a dollar. Uh, for those of you who are joining in Canada, we cannot ship directly from the winery to you, but these wines <clears throat> are available at the LCBO if you're in the Ontario region uh, through Noble Estates. And we have our wines represented really throughout Canada. So uh, we don't want you to go dry. We want you to always be able to have a bottle of Hall or Walt or Baca, which is another wine that we make, but we're not try trying that tonight. Uh, I, ready for you. So I don't think we need to wait any longer. I think it's a time to bring on our very, very special guest. So I am going to be joined by, as I said, Annie Murphy, Catherine O'Hara, and Noah Reed. And we're going to sip some wine and have some fun. And I think they're coming on now. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, Catherine. Oh. How fun is this? I, it's just <laughs> so wonderful to see you all, I must say. So are you all just still on cloud nine? Catherine, great to see you again, by the way. Um, Lovely to see you, Catherine. So is it just, uh, is it cloud nine still? It's been a couple days. Catherine? Uh, yes, it is. I'm still confused. I was driving... <laughs> I was driving. I thought I was not that affected, but I was driving to our cottage that we've had for 25 years and I got lost three times and left a bag in two different places, had to go back. Just really, yeah, kind of out of my mind. And today, oh just, my God. so I suppose That's... I'd like to blame it on the Emmys. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so now, and, um, speaking of the Emmys, do you all, so Annie, do you have the, an Emmy in hand at this point or? No, so I'm just going to use this instead. Ah. Um, <laughs> You're going to use that? <laughs> <laughs> no, because they only gave out, um, I guess because we were in Canada, they only gave out three um, Emmys, one to lead actor, lead actress, and best show. So um, I, I hear that mine's going to be shipped in the mail to me at some point in time, so that'll be a nice surprise whenever it comes. <laughs> Pretty fabulous. I just um, I have to think it was really wonderful. You all were together that night. Um, uh, I saw wearing masks. You were looking very appropriate, but still just the togetherness must have felt really good, didn't it, Noah? It was amazing. I think, you know, we, we were able to do that, I think, because, you know, we're up in Canada where the, the 
the numbers are, are fewer and we were able to get tests and, uh, and isolate, but we wanted to make sure we were wearing masks to send the appropriate messages and make sure we were being safe. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite amazing to all get to be together. You know, we were seeing so many other shows and nominees in isolation in their homes and, you know, with their immediate families. And so it was not lost on us at all that we, we got to be together as a, as a TV family. It was pretty special. So Catherine, you uh, obviously got the uh, Lead Actress Award in a comedy series, but you have received so many other awards. Was it um, more special? Was it different? These are people you've been living with and a character you've been living for six years. <laughs> yeah, you never want to expect such a thing because everyone really, really does deserve it. And so many more deserve to be nominated. So you, you, you know, you don't, you don't expect anything of it, but the best was being with the cast and, and, uh, and, you know, we all told each other, Oh, you're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. And none of us listened. Thank goodness. And then, you know, it started with, you know, I was, the, my category was the first award and we just screamed because what, how could this be? And then one after the other seven in a row, we, we all kept saying to each other, are we making this up right now? Are we all sharing a dream? What is, it was just so crazy. And, to watch Daniel, the best is it's on um it's all over on the internet, but watching Daniel react while Annie does her first of all, Annie reacts to winning because Annie was so sure she wouldn't. And and uh I mean as we all were, and not about you, Annie, but I'm oh, sure Annie about would. each of us. <laughs> <laughs> about each of us. None of us thought any of us were going to win. And and uh it was just to watch Daniel behind Annie, that that love was in the room, that love was there every day on the set. Um yeah, it's really it's uh, such a lovely group of people. Yeah, it would have been not not nearly the same being at home alone. You know. So you you certainly felt that, I'm sure, Annie. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it was just it it was extra special that in the in the last season of the show, um, people were nominated, not necessarily one, but at least were nominated kind of all across the board and hair and makeup and costumes and writing and you know it was. Um, it was so great because there were, it was just, it's been such a tightly knit group of people for six years, all of whom work so hard and so passionately. And um, so to see everyone kind of get a, a little piece of recognition was so wonderful. Well, in fact, you won every category that you entered, I think, that you were nominated for, which is like... <laughs> Nine, nine out of 15. Yes, nine yeah. out of, all of them that night. At yeah. the end, no, you remember this, at the end of the seven awards, and that was right at the top of the show, seven awards in a row, they all went to Schitt's Creek, and then it went to a commercial break, and Noah said, you realize no other show has won anything <laughs> And it's so un-Canadian of us yeah. to be that excited about getting something like that, but it was like, oh, it was just so absurdly fun. Wasn't it? Oh. Well, it was fun for all of us who are such fans of uh, each of you individually and also the show as a whole. It was just so extraordinary. Um, I think we should get to our business here. We can celebrate. Um, I think, let's see, what did, uh, let's, we'll taste this wine. Uh, and I'm, Maura, you called this, Maura called this. Uh, we're going to test the, let's see, the perks of the industry. So we're going to start with this. <laughs> perks of this industry. True. So this is our, this is a Pinot Noir. It comes from uh, a vineyard that we call Bob's Ranch. I named it after my dad. Uh, the brand is Walt, which is my maiden name. Um, I think we have a picture of the vineyard here. Oh, we don't have a picture. We have pictures of other vineyards that we'll show you. But anyway, so this comes from a vineyard that is over in Sonoma. So it's a little west of uh, where we are here in Napa Valley. And, um, and it's so it's a, a very, it's a site where all the vines have to be really very hardy. And you get a wine, a Pinot Noir off of these vineyards. It tends to be very, very powerful, have a lot of body. And let's, um, you all are being so polite to me and not drinking until we start. So let's have at it. Um, so the first thing you want to do is just sort of smell it. Um, so uh, for me, it's sort of, I'm getting sort of a little smoke, smokiness maybe in here. 
Uh, and generally on the palate, we should be getting some blackberry, I'm thinking. Mm. Yeah. Wow. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a, mm -hmm. okay, that'll do. <laughs> I get the blackberry. I get the dark, the dark berry fruit. Yeah, for sure. Oh, do you? Oh, Noah. Great. You know what I noticed that Noah did is something that we learned when we were in Italy last summer, which is a like a open, op open mouth smell, because it gets the. Oh really? That's the. I don't know exactly what the science is. Noah, do, will you take it away from here? More smelling. I think more it's just smelling. more smelling. More smelling. <laughs> well, it's really it's. I, I love to smell wines. I mean, to me, that's just um, another way of enjoying these wines. And it also, I think, just sort of tells you what to expect. Expect. I think there's a reason we were made with our nose above our mouths. I mean, they really go together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, when you smell this, I think you expect to have a lot of sort of blackberry fruit that comes into it. And, and lo and behold, that's what you find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Mm. That's very so good. I'd love to hear uh, how your characters from Schitt's Creek might uh, oh. describe this wine, if you guys are willing to go back there. Just so. <laughs> um, and Moira, of course, was has the most experience. So I was thinking, I, Catherine, I was just thinking, how might your character uh, describe this wine? Well, the deep blue black berry. <laughs> Of my favorite Pinot from Bokal Wall, from from Walbach, from Wall Walla Hall Hallebach, from 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 that's Lack. nice. That's it. That was <laughs> yes. Oh, that's oh, so good. Her. Okay. <laughs> How to Alexis? Um, it's like. It's like kind of sexy. Of course, like, of course. It's kind of like Antonio Banderasi or like it's Benito del Toro esque, I would say. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you've probably been on a trip with him somewhere. Yeah. That's right. Or some <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what they smell while. like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Noah. How, how are you going to describe this one? Patrick. Well, I would say that I'm not picking up any um, Antonio Banderas per se, but a, a beautiful uh, mid-range, uh, some very nice, a very balanced wine, um, just like Patrick did. Mm. Oh, lovely. That was well done. Really very nice. Okay. <laughs> so let me um, say to all of our viewers who are watching, um, ask us questions. Um, the uh, Our guests have very graciously said that they will answer questions so you can post them. We'll try to, I will try to pose them over the course of our program. And um, so we'll get to as many as we can um, going forward. So Let's see, is there anything else I want to ask you about this show? Probably that will just come up as we're going going forward. Um, so let's try, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll just go on to our next one because we've got three. I want you to know. So this is a serious business here. By so the way, I didn't say so. I love that. I did love the Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Did you? I did yeah. too, very much. I yeah. really did. So Pinot so often, Noir is just, it's a wonderful grape because it's very, it's very easy. It's very light on the palate and it's a wonderful wine to pair. In fact, I think it's the best wine to pair with food because it's, uh, it doesn't overpower the dish that it's with. It generally has a nice acidity, which is a really good compliment for, for a dish. Um, I'm what glad does you like it. What does acidity taste like? What, what am I, how do I know I'm tasting acidity? Uh, it's um, <laughs> it kind of um, question. It's set. It sort of prickly in your mouth. Yeah, it's it sort is. of a like this. Um, you'll get another. There's another kind of. Uh, you get tannins in your mouth that make your mouth go sort of the back of your mouth. You want a second, but yeah. acidity. It's sort of like if you're sipping a lemon or um, 
something is that's what I mean by acidity. But certainly, yeah. if you ever have one of my wines that tastes like a lemon, it's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. but, and, the, and the tannins, you don't want a lot of tannins, do you? Because doesn't that does that dry out the back of your mouth or exactly what you don't want to the, so a great wine really is all about it's, it's balance you know you want to have nice fruit a perfect wine is uh starts with the nose with the wonderful aromas then it you bring it in and it's lovely at the front of the mouth it has some nice fruit at the front and then it has a, an appropriate weight in the middle and then after you swallow it it should have a lingering flavors so that's called so the um a, a wine really is something that you can enjoy or I, you know is meant to be enjoyed from the very beginning all the way through to the to the end yeah yeah and so. beyond and beyond <laughs> and beyond yes and then it's yeah, i hate when they just stop <laughs> yeah when yeah you taste the wine and it just stops like it does by the way and we have all had wines like that you're right. And uh, and especially if a wine uh, has a lot of fruit at the front, when you, burst, you bring it into your mouth, you really are expecting a lot of carry through. And what happens uh, it, when it stops, it's it's especially disappointing. So, you know, a lot of this is a lot of people don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. But I I also think that we have an impression from wine. And if a wine is really, really well made, it just fills all those questions. It does all of those tasks seamlessly and really without thought. You don't have to think about it as you're enjoying it. Right. With a pink okay. like this, is, is it what it, you were talking about pairing earlier and how it's a really good wine to pair with food. Is, is that because it's so sort of uh, diverse and it, it can pair with many different things or or how would you how yeah explain that a little a little more yeah no I think that's a great question I mean there are great wines that can pair whether it's a Cabernet or a Zinfandel or a Chardonnay I mean all of those wines can pair beautifully with food but the thing about Pinot Noir that's so special is that it has a lot of flavor and it's also really versatile so if you are going to have a dinner party for example and just serve one wine I would say you want to take a Pinot Noir because it can really take you from salad all the way through dessert you know it's right. not it's not going to overpower the dish that it's with um, but it's rather enhance it you know I mean I think a lot of people when they plan their meal, uh, will they'll take them, think of the dish they're going to serve, and then they make the wine selection. Um, it happens that for me, it's the reverse. I take the wines and then I put the, the food around it. But 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 anyway, I think you have to think about all those tastes kind of in com in combination one with the other. I mean, that is really the art of winemaking. You know, it's this delicate balance always. Mm. So yeah. so. Now, we have a, a game um, that we're going to play. Uh, I guess we'll get, let's, I'm going to just sort of carry on with this rather than going on to our next one right now. So oh. this is, a, uh, while we still have our Pinot Noir, uh, okay. this game is called Sip or Spill. Um, <laughs> so you, so you, here the, what you get to do, I'm going to ask you a question and you can either spill the beans and ask, answer the question, or you can take a sip. Okay. okay. So here we go. Let Why me get would out anyone my not question. want to take a sip? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> or we do both. You can spill the beans yeah, and take no a sip. No questions answered. Yeah. 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 That's the deal. Okay. Uh, and these are going to be sort of related to the your Schitt's Creek character. Annie, uh, which of your boyfriends did you like working with best? Like actor wise? <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh dear. Or my so you can take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> well, gosh, I'm not gonna take a sip because I need to keep this interesting. I, I enjoyed working with both of them deeply, but Dustin was in it for the Dustin Milligan who played Ted was in it for the long haul. And so we, we spent a lot of time together and had a lot of really wonderful giggles together. So I, 
I'm going to answer it. It's going to have to be Dustin. Oh. Well, no. I'm calling Tim. I'm calling Tim. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Can I say I, I ran that into a woman? So obvious. So I ran into a woman the other day who uh, I was standing talking to my brother on the street, and he said, uh oh, this woman's a real fan of the show. <laughs> He's, you're okay though. And, and she came along, she went, oh, oh. And then said, why did Ted have to go back? And why did they not get married? And could, you, could, could Daniel write something? Where okay, it's okay if she goes to New York, but can, then then can she please? Can he please come back? It was so sweet. She had it all mapped out. What needed to happen for the two of you? It was she. Uh, uh, she believed you're real. She believed you have a future, and so do I actually. <laughs> <laughs> so do I actually. Now that we talk about it, <laughs> so we Dan all have you on the phone. Okay, next. Um, Catherine, who was your favorite child, David or Alexis? Oh, I have an answer for that. <laughs> you do? <laughs> well, no, I don't actually. It's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. You know, like like with like with your real children, you have <laughs> changes all the time. If you were ever to think of a favorite. Uh, and I try not to with my children, but you have moments that are just so beautiful with each child. And so, you know, uh, with the great thing about Moira and Johnny is they didn't even know their kids before this. They thought they did and they thought they were great parents, but they had, you know, thrown money at them, <laughs> basically raised them in uh, captivity of money. Um, so the, the, it was just so beautiful to play scenes with Annie, Alexis and Daniel, David, and and discover who they were and what beautiful young people they were and how much potential they had to go out in the world and survive without us and it just made Eugene and me feel like our characters feel like the best parents in the world and it is a cool thing when you really um if you can sort of detach from your own kids which is really hard I think and actually let them just be who they're meant to be without laying your own whatever on them and as freaky as these parents were, we really did let these, act. so I don't have a favorite. They're both my babies. Well, I think she needs to take a sip. What do you guys think? <laughs> I have to say lie. I feel like we all have to lose the favorite, so. Finally, I'll take more than a sip. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, so true. We all just, we so um, loved, I'll just, I'll just simply speak for myself. I just, the, the beautiful part of the show really wasn't, for me, the humor, which was like so over the top, laugh out loud, funny, but it was those growing emotions that um, that happened among the cast. It was just so yeah. beautiful. Okay, it's, now. See David loved by such a wonderful young man. <sighs> yes, and it's now true. I'm getting to that young man. Why was he lucky? So, <laughs> and so Noah. Yes. Uh, Give us your favorite, your best Moira interpretation, Ooh. impersonation. Wow. That's not fair. Annie does a good one. I feel like this should have gone to Annie. You know, um, going to, I'm just going to chug the rest of my wine <laughs> oh, no, no, no. in front of her face. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay Annie. Impression. Save Noah. <laughs> Like, well, give, no, us no. An, give us an no. impression. <laughs> Catherine, do your best <laughs> Moira impression. Please, take both of us. I love when you did in the Me. recording studio. That was the best. What in the, uh, in the recording studio? When Alexis did it in the recording studio after we were trying to shoot, oh. uh, record the commercial, yeah. and yeah. then she took over for Moira. When Alexis took over for Moira, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it? It was. It was. Um... <laughs> Larry Air? Yeah, it was fly through the air with Larry Air. <laughs> it was good. Alexis doing Moira, which was That's which complex. Was, That's a lot of layers of a lot of it was and yeah. you know, to go real deep. But you so added good. a syllable to air. That was great. Air. Air. Oh, air. three. Air. Three. That's good. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my yeah. favorite, my favorite um, when we get asked, like, what's your favorite Moira ism? I think even though she has these beautiful words that she just like are so flowery and, and wonderful. I think it was when Catherine made the word how into three syllables. So it went from how to how. Yeah. And that's, I think that's like the quintessential Moira. Oh, did he expire? <laughs> oh, that yeah. Is so I'm amazing. <laughs> we know. We know. No, okay. I am seeing empty glasses over there. So I think we do need to move on to our next one, which is a Cabernet. So uh we're gonna do this one next you guys so this is our 1873 cabernet 2016 vintage okay so this wine comes from uh a couple of different vineyards it's a blend but they are all uh vineyards that are hillside so, uh, and there are particular characteristics that go along with being a hillside vineyard. Um, and I think we have a picture here to show you of this vineyard. Uh, maybe we don't. Well, if we don't, I'm just going to tell you about it. Yeah, um, it so this is, um, the vineyards here are, um, they're very elevated. This, the slopes are, are steep. And as a result, the, uh, the wines tend to be very, very dense. So when you tasting this wine or any wine that you are, you understand to be made from hillside vineyards, you're going to expect a lot of sort of denser flavors, flavors that are more dense. So, uh, well, let's try this one. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So I forgot I'm to smell some, it. Whoa. Yeah. Catherine, you're not, you're not smelling it? I forgot. <laughs> Forgive me, Catherine. <laughs> I just went for it. We've done this before. Oh, yes. Come on. I know, and I knew how good it was. So, I'd... so I'm sort of getting some pepper on the nose on this, mm. you know, just a little bit. So definitely sort of dark fruit. So again, you know, what you anticipate is that you're going to get some, maybe, maybe a little raspberry in there, just sort of a, sort of, uh, definitely berry flavors. Mm -hmm. um, I smell booze. No, I smell booze. <laughs> yeah. There's booze in there. Oh, yeah, there is. There is an alcohol element, though, isn't there? To all the beautiful uh, hmm. aromas that you get. Yeah. No, it it does. I mean, it it does have an aroma, and you know, I mean, this is a very big wine. Um, it's dense, dense in the in the flavors, but also it's going to have. Um, sort of wow. it is it it's one of our higher alcohol wines i mean i think that was really great that you picked that up, that up catherine you're very um, kind but simply because it's just it's a very very big wine so wow and and all um, right mm. wow this i wish i could describe what i'm well feeling <laughs> okay try Maybe, wow can I throw something out there that I, I can, mm -hmm. you can tell me if I'm, if I'm way off here, but like, there's something sort of like herbaceous about it. Like there's a, almost like a touch of, like I don't know if I'm way off, but like some kind of like cilantro-y thing that's happening at the end yeah. there. I'm, I'm I, don't, I don't know. No, definitely herbal. Yeah, yeah. definitely herbal. It's, there's definitely an herbal thing. And for me, maybe a little bit of forest floor in here. Yeah. Nicely done, Noah. Hey, listen, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, really. Uh, oh, I, I fogged mine up. I breathed so much into it, out of it. Um, now, explain what legs mean, because I was surprised at this. And maybe Annie and Noah know this already, but what do may legs I, tell you? May I, may I guess? Yeah, legs will, legs actually speak to the alcohol content in a wine. So, um, did you know that, Annie? Well, I think so. It, it is, it's when you swirl, it's like the, the, they kind of do look like legs, like the, the dregs of wine on the glass after you swirl. Right. It. But exactly. it tells you that there's, it tells you about alcohol content. That's what it's about. It does. So, okay, exactly. So, so go on. Okay. So, so the more, the more 
residue the higher alcohol content? Well, in a in a higher in general in a higher alcohol wine, you're going to see more legs. It's true, okay. um, which is not something that you necessarily go for when you're making a wine. When we when we make wines, we want to make the best wines that we can from the from the vineyard itself. And some some years that means you want to have a wine that has a little bit higher alcohol or has a little more flavors, which will are going to tend to lead to a higher alcohol, or it'll be a lighter wine. So it just, it, it, it varies, it changes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I've brought up alcohol twice and I know that's not the point. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I sound oh, like yeah. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh, Catherine, you can't see this, but you just, the lake behind you is getting more and more beautiful. Oh, good. Oh lake my gosh. You're green screening yourself. It's, it's too beautiful. <laughs> No, because it's changed. Now you know it's not a fake background. Yeah, it's it's, it's a very complex Zoom background that changes over the course of time. It's yeah. Not... No. Happy no, did you hear the boat go by? Doing. When I we did. first started, there, a boat went by. I, I thought that was a clever bit of sound design on your part to have a fake boat noise. I told you I was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we should take some questions because we've Questions have been coming in, so let's see what we've got here. Um, well, if we don't have a question, I, I'm just going to ask you a question. So, okay. Oh, oh. all right. Here's from Brian, uh, this is Catherine's next work project. Um, hmm. Getting to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> And then holding up in the apartment while my husband and sons work and hopefully writing something uh, because really, no, I, I have no other uh, possibilities, really. I mean, no, I've been offered nice things, but nothing that, um, boy, doing a Schitt's Creek is a hard thing to top for me. But um, I mean, for all, for the whole show, you know, topping that whole show, that whole experience. So no, I don't know. Sorry, Brian. No Wait, good answer. Go can I take a sip instead? <laughs> oh, yes. We can take sips all the way through. Always so, enough. I like that. So here's uh, Sue, Sue Pallott. I hope I'm saying your name right, Sue, is asking what's next for each of you. Oh, um, so, Annie, um, we speak for that because you've got something brand new going on. I do. I do. And um, apologies for my language in advance. I'm just saying the name of my show. Um, my new show, uh, it's it's an AMC hour-long dark comedy, and it's called Kevin Can Fuck Himself. And, <laughs> and um, it's a really interesting show. It's, it's uh, so you know that the typical kind of um, sitcom with the, the boorish sports loving husband and he has this wife that's just kind of a, a prop for the, being the butt of the jokes and serving sandwiches and that kind of thing. So this show is from the perspective of the sitcom wife. And so it's really her story, even though she's, a, she's much more of a secondary character in the sitcoms that we know. Um, but what's really cool about it is that it alternates between a multicam sitcom world when she's with, with her husband. And then when she's by herself, it's this really beautiful um, kind of gritty single cam. So it's going to be cool to like jump back and forth between the two. And I'm really excited. I, it feels so weird to be starting a new project without these two people. It, <laughs> it's very spooky. Um, but I'm here in Quincy, Massachusetts now, and it's all happening. So yeah, I'm excited to get going. Very cool. I can't wait to watch it. It really. What are you up to next, my friend? Yeah, what are you doing? What am I doing? Nobody Where's your tour? Well, he's, <laughs> he's a newlywed, isn't he? Yeah. That's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm taking some respectable time off to enjoy newlywed life. No, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sort of, um, I'm trying to work on a new record and see if I can get back in the recording studio before the end of the year. And uh, 
hopefully something fun in the new year, but uh, but nothing I can spill just yet. So I'll have to sip, I guess. That's sort of. You you did have a big tour. You had a tour that, and we got to see you in LA. I but did. You have were, a tour and you were beautiful. <laughs> but you had a tour that got uh, hindered, hindered, shall we say, <laughs> by a virus. Much like the entire music industry, uh, you know, got but I was I was glad to get a couple of those shows in, and and uh, amazing to get to play in in Los Angeles and have the cast come out and and support. That was pretty wild. And Sarah and Levy opened for you. Sarah Levy opened for me, and we we performed a duet of "Simply the Best" at oh. the end, which was oh, a lot. Oh, of how fun it was that really beautiful, and the yeah. audience was just. In your pocket, just so in love as we all were. Uh, Noah is really an, an amazing performer of beautiful songs that he wrote. Really, it really, really is a great show. I hope you get to do it soon again. Thank you, Catherine. That's very sweet. That's true. Say, Annie, so how are you uh, doing this production and during the COVID and all the restrictions? Doesn't that impede your? It it does. So today was my first day back, and it's just wild to see like they have gone to such great lengths we we all get tested three times a week cast and crew um they have they've like redone hvac systems in the studios they've built sets when they we were supposed to shoot them on location um we rehearsed today six feet apart outside in masks which was it's all so weird but everyone's just kind of like doing what they have to do to be as safe as possible because if someone on set gets infected basically the everything has to be shut down so everyone's just being very 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 cautious so yeah. something that we have to do is move on to our third wine um, oh poor us and, <laughs> darn it I know. so so this uh the last wine we're going to have is a 2017 uh it's a it's a cabernet and it's our Catherine Hall, which is our flagship wine. And so, so this is, uh, this is a wine that comes from my backyard, actually, or largely from my backyard. We blend in some other grapes with it, but it's, uh, and I'm thinking, Catherine, we might've had this when you and I were tasting wine. I think we did. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, so I really, I love this wine. Um, so it's, it, it's a hillside. It's about 750 feet elevation, uh, which is high for Napa. And the, the beauty of this vineyard is that year after year, it always makes these grapes that are just really lush and opulent and um, full of flavors. So anyway, yeah. let's try it. Do you sort of get that, you see that sweetness when you first, you know, we were talking about Noah about how when you're first trying a wine and that the sweetness is very apparent on this wine, I think. Yeah, yeah. Is there a chocolatey situation going on? Wow, very impressive. Yes, there yeah. is. You're not just telling me I'm right to make No, no, I mean, that's absolutely right. So often on a, uh, on a Cabernet, you will get a little bit of chocolate I think it's very apparent in this wine, um, and that reflects uh, in part that this was a it was a warm growing season, sure. and so uh, when, uh, often when you have sort of a warmer climate, I mean, a vineyard the vintages change year to year off of the same vineyard, but this tended to be rather warm. It had some heat mm. spikes during the during the growing period, and so yeah. Definitely, I would say there. I would say minimum seventy percent cacao. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, um, Pat, yeah. Noah, yeah, Patrick would uh, carry any of these wines in the apothecary. Would he carry? Um, what would he do with any of these I think, wines? I think uh, we would carry all of these wines. And in fact, I think that we would probably, uh, over the course of time, after deciding to stay in the town, we might just set up a little wine bar in town. Not to, not to um, you know, contrast too much with the Cafe Tropical. We wouldn't want to infringe on their business. Yeah. But, you know, offer something maybe a little different, a little more refined. Um, and, uh, yeah, transform the little 
town of Schitt's Creek into a, a, a place where, uh, where people can enjoy fine wines. You know what I mean? I love that. I love the idea. You know? I see a movie. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. So let's, it's, um, let's take one more question from, um, the, uh, our folks who are watching us. So do we have any more questions? I know people have been just asking so many and, uh, we'll see what we got. Too much okay. Light on me. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh. <laughs> what was your most fun episode to, to make? Let's start with Moira. Thank you, Catherine. What would Moira <laughs> say? What was the first? I did that once before too. See, that's okay. Uh, Moira is way more interesting than I am. And, no, and I get not. That. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> so favorite ep episode. Oh dear. Oh man. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we can take another uh, sip. Okay. <laughs> um, what would be the favorite? Ooh. I love, well, I, oh, you know what's fun? This is even a favorite episode, but I'm going to think of, of where we were all together. My, my son, my daughter, my husband, and my future son-in-law was uh, we were shooting a barbecue scene. And it was actually where Patrick's girl ex-girlfriend uh, shows up. But just that day, I guess I'm thinking more of the day shooting than the actual scene. But just being together like that is, oh, wait, was Annie there? Was Alexis in the scene? Um, yes, no, you brought, no, you brought no, her in. You brought the girl in. That's how I did. I because I couldn't picture you at the at the picnic table for a second there. <laughs> no, we were sitting at the picnic table, and then you and there was something about how close in that scene, how close uh, the crew was, how close we all were to each other, physically yeah. all day. Yeah. That was so pre-COVID, of course. Um, but it was just a sweet day outside that motel in Hockley Valley, Ontario. That's a good one. Noah, what would you say? Oh God! I mean, it is difficult to pick one episode given how uh, each each episode carries its own favorite memories. But I would say, as a as a sports fan, the baseball episode was a lot of fun. Oh. As a theater person, the cabaret episode was a ton of fun. And as now a wine person, I really enjoyed the episode in the sixth season when um, when uh, Eugene and I showed up to <laughs> to take a very drunk Moira and David home after they had sampled too many fruit wines. <laughs> I know, but that's it great because so the baseball. Good. The ba I'm sorry, the baseball is also in that. That's true. Yeah, yes, that's, that's good. A that's good choice. I got some nice father-in-law time with Eugene, which is always an absolute delight. So that was a fun. I I so love that. Not, you know, we never had a chance. I was hoping to hear Catherine say banana <laughs> as, you were, as you were talking about all those wines. Oh, we don't make great. a lot of wines that have banana, I have to say. Annie, what too. was your favorite of us? Yeah. Um, I mean, Cabaret was very, very special because it was the whole cast in a theater. We had to rehearse and rehearse and it actually felt like we were putting on this performance. Um, but then I think like... I think the last episode was so, or second last episode, last episode, the wedding. Um, <laughs> the episode, we have seen the show. It's tricky. Oh, it's it's tricky to remember. Um, but just the the scenes where everyone gets to be together because everyone got along so well and you know took such joy in being in each other's company. Um, those were the those were the days that were the best when everyone could be there on set and. Um, and also watching, we got, when we rehearsed the wedding, we all started out by sitting in the pews, listening to the Jazza Gals rehearse and record. So it was literally all the cast and all the crew just sitting there in silence, listening to these women be extraordinary. And then Eugene crying in the back, which made everyone else start crying. <laughs> um, that was a really special day. It was. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so beautiful. beautiful. You all have been so generous with your time, and I just hate that this has to end, but it must. Um, before you go, uh, we all 
are going to be missing you so much. We've spent so much time with you over the last six years. Um, any last thoughts for all of your fans who are here with us? Catherine, maybe you would go first. Oh, dear. Um, just I think uh, we've heard from so many people about the show getting them through pandemic and uh, or helping to get them through and uh, enjoying the show along with other shows i'm sure with their whole family um and that's really rewarding the love and inclusivity that's in the show but also the laughs have um somehow come at the right time and uh people are actually living with their adult children parents are living with their adult children <laughs> in the same home and it's almost like we've, we've given an example of how it could actually work out um so that's been really, really rewarding. I don't know when we're ever going to experience anything like this, and we don't need to. We, we were just really blessed to have this, I think, or at least I was. Hmm. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Noah? Well, I, I echo the sentiment, and I think that as, as lucky as we were to, uh, you know, get to, get to work and, and be around each other all these years, uh, we're also incredibly lucky to have a, a, a seemingly an endlessly positive and supportive group of fans who have really championed all the things about this show that that make it special for us. And uh, yeah, we we couldn't have we couldn't have lucked out better with our our group of uh, loyal viewers. So we're deeply appreciative. Yeah, cheers to that. Oh, we Always hard to go last, Annie. But well, I'm I'm not going to top either one of those. I want to to just melt both of those answers into one answer, and that's mine. So <laughs> to what they both said, and this you have to take a sip now. Okay. Yeah, that's a thing. Thank you. I'm, I'm sipping. Well, I'm, I'm gratefully sipping. It is such a joy to have you on, and thank you for not only being on a, on this show with me. But thank you for six beautiful years. I really, I look forward to seeing you next time. Um, I hope next time is when is in person, but some other time soon. To you all, thank you so thank you, very, Catherine. very much. Cheers, Catherine. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Stay happy, guys. <laughs> oh, I hope you have enjoyed that as much as I did. It was. Um, it's been a great six years and it's been full of laughs. Uh, I tell everybody who will listen, um, for years I've been saying that this is laugh out loud funny, but on top of that, this sort of the love and the hope that this series has brought us all is has been such a gift. So thank you so much to Annie and Catherine and Noah for joining us and to you all. Thank you so much for being part of the show and, and tuning in. Uh, we have more fabulous shows ahead. Not only uh, will we be back with Schitt's Creek, uh, Dan and Eugene and, uh, and the cast, but uh, Friday, I'll be back with the Daytime Emmy Award winners, Doug and Laura Lee on, uh, from Young and the Restless. So I'll see you on Friday. Please join me, and in the meantime, stay healthy and sip up.